At the recent NEO Day event, NEO announced that they would be implementing 150 kilowatt hour solid state batteries into their new ET7 electric sedan in Q4 of 2022. Let's explore NEO's solid state battery technology and see how it compares to Tesla's 4680 batteries, which should be at mass full production around that same time at the end of 2022. I'm Jonathan, and welcome to Cleaner Watt. NEO CEO William Lee said the following at NEO Day, January 9th of 2021, quote, We adopt the most advanced production-ready solid-state battery tech to improve the energy density by 50% through material and process innovations. The 150 kilowatt hour battery boasts an ultra-high energy density of 360 watt-hours per kilogram. The in-situ solidification and hybrid electrolyte secure the cell safety. The inorganic pre-lithiation and silicon carbon composite anode together with a nanode coating and nickel ultra-rich cathode can significantly boost the energy density while achieving a good battery life and a higher charging efficiency. The upcoming new model referring to the ET7 sedan with a 150 kilowatt hour battery will have a range over 1000 kilometers and that's according to the NEDC cycle and will start from Q4 next year which would be Q4 of 2022. So this is the first of a series of videos where we're going to dive into the comments from William Lee about the battery tech. And we can actually use a lot of the things that he said to determine a lot about Neo's battery technology. With my research, I found some good information that we can use to compare to Tesla's 4680 batteries, which will be in mass production when Neo starts shipping these new batteries at the end of 2022. The first comparison that I like to make between these batteries that we'll dive into mainly in this video comes down to the energy density of their batteries. And they mention a number 360 watt hours per kilogram for their new solid state batteries. When it comes to comparing battery technologies, energy density is one of the key factors that you need to compare because as you increase the energy density, both in gravimetric, which we'll talk about in a minute, and volumetric energy density, that allows you to have a more efficient electric vehicle with a potentially larger battery, and that allows that vehicle to go further on a single charge. When it really comes down to it, much of what battery scientists and battery researchers are trying to figure out is how to make a very high energy dense battery that doesn't weigh very much and doesn't take up a lot of room. This is one of the key problems that researchers are trying to figure out and this is what we're going to talk about in this video. Now, as I mentioned, there are two types of energy density measurements that you'll commonly see. The first one is gravimetric or it's also called specific energy density in some places. This number simply gives us the weight as compared to the watt hours of energy storage in a battery. This measurement is usually given in watt hours per kilogram. The second term that you'll see given is a volumetric energy density, and that's simply the volume as compared to the watt hours of energy storage. This measurement is most often given in watt hours per liter. So with those terms defined, let's dive into the energy density comparison between Tesla and NEO, talking about both their current battery tech and also their future battery tech with NEO, that's the solid state battery, and with Tesla, that's the 4680 battery cells. As I mentioned earlier, the NEO CEO, William, mentioned that this vehicle will have a 150 kilowatt hour battery with an energy density, talking about the gravimetric energy density of 360 watt hours per kilogram. Now, while he didn't mention this specifically, I feel it's pretty safe to assume that he's talking about at the cell level with that kind of energy density because that matches up with the technology that we'll dive into in the future with the hybrid electrolytes that are being used in these batteries. So according to these comments from William Lee, they will be delivering these 150 kilowatt hour batteries at the end of 2022. And for the sake of this video, we're going to give him the benefit of the doubt and assume that this actually happens. So obviously to make a comparison, we also need to know the energy density of Tesla's new battery tech, the 4680 battery cells. 
If you've been following along with my videos and other people's videos, you know that it's assumed by most people that have been researching this that Tesla's current energy density number for the 4680 battery cells is somewhere around 300 watt hours per kilogram. These are the batteries coming out of that pilot line at the Fremont facility. This is based on Elon Musk's recent comments about the Tesla Semi during a European conference on batteries, and here is that quote from Elon Musk. If you want, for long range trucking, you can take the range up to, we think, easily 800 kilometers, and we see a path over time to 1,000 kilometer range for a heavy duty truck. 300 watt hours per kilogram, something like that, at the cell level, is enough to get the higher ranges that I talked about, the 800 kilometer range. So if we take the data that we have so far and we do a quick comparison, as you can see on this chart, the 4680 battery cells with a 300 watt hours per kilogram energy density at the cell level is less than what NEO is claiming they're going to have with their solid state batteries. However, both of these technologies are quite a step up from the 18650 cells found in the Tesla Model S and X and the 2170 cells found in the Model 3 and Model Y. However, for the bulk of this video, we're going to focus on a more important metric, and that's the energy density at the pack level. And of course, Tesla has some amazing innovations with their cell to chassis, where they actually make the battery part of the chassis structure. And we'll talk about what that means when it comes to energy density at the pack level. But what really matters, once again, is the pack level energy density. That's where the rubber really hits the road, and that's where we're going to focus. Is NEO going to be ahead at the pack level for their ET7 sedan? So in order to have a baseline for some of the upcoming calculations and estimations, we need to first begin with NEO's current in-production battery packs as compared to Tesla's current battery cells. We're going to use this information in just a minute to make some estimations and calculations for NEO's future battery tech, the solid state batteries. For NEO's current lineup, they offer a 70 kilowatt hour and a 100 kilowatt hour pack. In the past, they also offered an 84 kilowatt hour pack. According to the website EV specifications, and I also confirmed this with an official NEO document, the energy density at the pack level for their 70 kilowatt hour battery is right around 135 watt hours per kilogram. And according to this NEO press release, the 84 kilowatt hour battery had an energy density somewhere up to 170 watt hours per kilogram. So as we start filling in the data on this chart to make this comparison, you can see that I've put in NEO's current battery tech and also done a quick calculation for a theoretical 100 kilowatt hour battery pack, what that would weigh for our comparison. When it comes to energy density at the pack level for Tesla's current battery tech, I referenced this Clean Technica article, which we've talked about in the past, where the late Jack Rickard gave us this look into the energy density at the pack level for the Model S and the Model X. And as you can see, the Model S has an energy density at the pack level at 126.7 watt hours per kilogram, and the Model 3 at that time had an energy density of around 159.5 watt hours per kilogram. So as you can see from this chart, it appears like NEO's 84 kilowatt hour pack at the pack level was more energy dense than Tesla's packs using the 2170 cells or the 18650 cells. However, as I mentioned earlier, NEO no longer has available the 84 kilowatt hour pack, but that has instead been replaced by a 100 kilowatt hour pack. According to this NEO press release, quote, with over 300 patents filed and gained, the 100 kilowatt hour battery features a cell to pack technology, realizing 37% higher energy density. Powered by the 100 kilowatt hour battery, the NEDC range of the NEO models can now reach up to 615 kilometers. Now I couldn't find any official documents that gave us a pack level energy density for the 100 kilowatt hour pack. However, they did give us an important number that 37% more energy dense. But the question remains 37% more energy dense than which battery pack? Since it was the 100 kilowatt hour pack that replaced the 84 kilowatt hour pack, I think it's important that we use the 84 kilowatt hour pack as the baseline that the 100 kilowatt hour pack improves upon. So using the energy density at the pack level number that we know directly from NEO of 170 watt hours per kilogram, and if you have a battery pack that is 37% more energy dense, that means that it could have an energy density of around 233 
watt hours per kilogram at the pack level. Based on what I can see, this new 100 kilowatt hour pack from NEO uses CATL's new NCM811 cells, which contain eight parts nickel, one part cobalt, and one part manganese. And at the cell level, CATL was able to achieve around 304 watt hours per kilogram with these new cells. Now with these two pieces of data, we can now calculate how much energy density is lost when you pack these cells up into the 100 kilowatt hour pack. And as you can see, starting with a 304 watt hour per kilogram cell and putting it in a pack and it turns into a 233 watt hours per kilogram pack, that means that you lost around 23.3% of the energy density with packing material. Since this is NEO's latest way to build their battery packs, I feel it's pretty safe to assume that we'll have a very similar number when it comes to NEO's solid state battery technology and how they package it. So for our calculations, calculating the pack level energy density for NEO's new solid state batteries, we're going to use this 23.3% number. Obviously the actual number could be slightly different, but I believe that's close enough and in the ballpark of where it will be. So if we start with NEO's solid state batteries at the cell level with an energy density of around 360 watt hours per kilogram, and you have a 23.3% reduction because of packaging at the pack level, that gives you an energy density of NEO's solid state battery pack at the pack level of around 276 watt hours per kilogram. Now, how does that compare to Tesla's battery technology? First of all, starting with the current generation of 2170 cells found in the Model 3 and the Model Y, Tesla was able to recently increase the energy density of their batteries by around 5%. This theoretically puts the energy density at the pack level around 167 watt hours per kilogram for the current packs found in the Model 3 and Model Y. But more importantly is the energy density at the pack level for our comparison for Tesla's 4680 batteries. And here's where the structural battery pack and the front and rear castings come into play. Here's a clip of Elon Musk at Battery Day talking about how effectively with the new structural battery pack, the non-cell portion of the pack actually has a negative mass. So, so this is really quite profound. Uh, the effectively, that the non-cell portion of the battery has negative mass. So it, we, we save so much mass in the rest of the vehicle, we, we save more mass in the rest of the vehicle than the non-cell portion of the battery. So it's like, well, how, how do you really minimize the mass of a battery? Make it negative. Make the battery non-cell portion of the battery pack negative. So with these statements from Elon Musk, I'd like to introduce a new term, and that is the watt hours per kilogram equivalent. Commonly, you'll see a miles per gallon equivalent number on websites like the EPA and fueleconomy.gov, and this is trying to compare an old technology, miles per gallon in a gas-burning vehicle, to the efficiency of an electric vehicle and when it comes to electricity consumption. In a similar way, this watt hours per kilogram equivalent is a good way to compare an old technology, the old even cell to pack technology or cell to module to pack technology and compare that to Tesla's new structural battery pack. So according to Elon Musk, we can actually have a 10% gain with all considered structural battery pack and front and rear castings. So you can actually add 10% energy density to Tesla's battery pack and get a watt hours per kilogram equivalent. So when you look at the entire package, you get a watt hours per kilogram equivalent for the structural 4680 battery pack of around 330 watt hours per kilogram. As you can see, a theoretical 100 kilowatt hour battery pack with this energy density would weigh around 303 kilograms or 668 pounds. This is substantially less than what I believe NEO's solid state battery pack will weigh, and this is really a true breakthrough. Now, just in case you missed battery day, I wanna give a real brief explanation about the structural battery pack. Ordinarily, with past technologies, manufacturers would take cells, put that into modules, and then those modules would be put into a battery pack. Then a new technology that is starting to roll out now came out, which is cell to pack. And they actually took cells and put them directly into a battery pack without modules. But the newest technology being pioneered by Tesla is the cell to structural battery pack. 
When with combined with Tesla's front and rear castings, the structural battery pack there in the middle, it allows for a 10% mass reduction, and that's the number we talked about earlier. So with Tesla's current 4680 battery cells coming out of the Fremont pilot line and future lines like Gigafactory Austin and also Gigafactory Berlin, these battery cells currently at the pack level should actually have a higher energy density at the pack level by far than even NEO's battery tech coming out in almost two years. But wait, it gets even better. Tesla's battery technology, I believe, will improve quite a bit even more over the years for this 4680 battery tech. In that previous comment that we mentioned earlier from Elon Musk, he said, quote, we see a path over time to 1,000 kilometer range for a heavy duty truck. So if Tesla is currently at 300 watts per kilogram and that allows them to go 800 kilometers and they see the roadmap to 1,000 kilometers, if that simply means an energy density increase of 25%, which is what that mileage increase is, that would mean that potentially Tesla sees a roadmap for their 4680 battery cells to reach around 375 watt hours per kilogram. If that's the case in the future and the 4680 battery cells have an energy density at the cell level of around 375, when you add a 10% gain for that structural battery pack and the front and rear castings, you could have a watt hours per kilogram equivalent of around 413 for the 4680 batteries at the pack level. Now I want to make sure and communicate that I'm in no way downplaying this new battery tech coming from NEO in 2022. I do believe it has some promise and I do believe it's going to be beneficial for the EV space. However, when it really comes down to it, Tesla has made a huge innovation with the structural battery pack combined with the 4680 battery cells and it's going to be hard to beat by anyone's technology, even solid state batteries. So that's the end of part one. Make sure that you're subscribed to this channel and that you click the little bell notifications so YouTube will notify you when I put up new videos in this series. I do want to mention that in future videos, we're going to dive a lot more into the chemistry of Neo solid state battery tech, talk about the hybrid electrolytes and how it's not a full solid state battery, but it's rather a hybrid semi solid state battery. We'll also, of course, do comparisons with Tesla's tech and we'll talk about the potential manufacturer of these batteries. And spoiler alert, it's probably not CATL. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and that you learned something as well. If you're not yet subscribed to this channel, please consider subscribing. And if you do subscribe, if you click the bell icon, you'll be notified when new videos are published. Also, if you did like the video, please consider clicking that like button because that helps other people find the video as well. Also, I want to take a moment here at the end of the video to thank the Patreon supporters who support me every month and help make this content possible. A special thank you to my performance supporters and also the other supporters listed on the screen. If you'd like to find out more about the Patreon community that I've set up, I'll put a link in the description below. Thank you so much.